This video is going to take a look at that first category we talked about in the previous video, processing. Now before there was a keyboard, before there were printers, even monitors, there was processing. If you really get into the computers, if you really geek out, you might hear about something called the Altair computer. The Altair was arguably the very first personal computer. And the Altair, the only thing the Altair had as far as input devices were these little switches that you'd flip up and down. But inside, you still had the processing power of a computer. But there was no keyboard, there were no mouses, there were no printers, there was no sound, but there always is processing. Processing would be the heart of what a computer is. It is the reason why computers are computers. Processing is the ability of the computer to take in raw data and then basically make sense out of it. One of the things I like to do is kind of give analogies to help people understand different concepts. Depending on who you talk to, they might have a problem with the analogy of a computer being like a brain, but you know, for our purposes, this is what we're going to do. If you take a look at a human being, if you took a look at any animal, we have something called a nervous system. And you've probably heard about this in middle school and elementary school and high school. The nervous system is composed of your brain and nerves. Your brain is where the thinking occurs, but the brain can't work by itself. It has to have nerves and support structures that help it out. When we're taking a look at processing from the computer's point of view, we're taking a look at the brains and the nerves that help the processing out. So as we're talking about this, keep that in mind. We just don't have a CPU and it does all the magic on its own. It has to have additional help from supporting structures. So the computer. The computer has both support structures and little brains that interpret data. The primary processor is known as something called the CPU or central processing unit. This is the brain of the computer. Now in the old days, you would have one CPU. As technology progressed, we sped up the CPU, we made it more efficient, more effective. Now we live in the wonderful days of multiprocessors. We actually have more than one CPU in our devices. Even our smartphones have more than one CPU working in there. It's pretty cool, okay? It's kind of kind of a neat little day and age we work, live in here. Uh, there's also other structures that help the CPU do their job. How does a computer think? Just like the human brain, the brain either has a signal or doesn't have a signal. Either neurons are firing or they're not firing. In the world of computers, remember we talked about binary and bits and bytes in the previous lesson? In the world of a computer, information is either sent or it's not sent. You either have a one or a zero. Either information is sent or it's not sent. So computers work via binary. Now the CPU, the microprocessor, the microprocessor, you almost also might hear it be called the central processing unit CPU, as well as the processor. This would be the quote unquote brains of the computer. We have two main companies that make CPUs. We have AMD, which stands for Advanced Micro De Devices, and Intel. When you go to your big box store, let's say you go to the electronics store and you want to buy a computer, one of the things that's on the spec sheet, one of the things that they sell to you is, hey, it's an AMD chip or it's an Intel chip. So these are the two major manufacturers. Of course, the question is, which is better? The answer to that one is, is they're both fine. Uh, the beginning of computers, the beginning of comp uh, Pentiums and Pentium 2s and AMDs, they would battle back and forth. AMD would get ahead of Intel. Intel would then get ahead of AMD. AMD would jump up in front of them back and forth, back and forth. Nowadays, if you buy any decent computer, it's going to have what you need for it to do. So you don't have to pay as much attention. Again, this is my personal belief on this one. You don't have to pay as much attention to your processor for the general consumer market nowadays as far as computers go. So how do you find out what kind of CPU your computer has? There's actually a very quick method to do so. If you're on a PC, if you're on a Windows computer, right click on the My Computer button, the icon, and then select Properties. The information as far as what your CPU is, is listed under Computers. If you're on a Mac, at the top left side of the screen, there's that little apple. You want to click on it and then click on About This Mac and it will tell you 
generally what processor you have. There's also another button that says more info. If you want more information about your computer, you can click on that to get, again, more information. Now we have a concept called integrated circuits. Integrated circuits will connect transistors and other electronic components on chips of semiconductor materials. Let me go over that again. Integrated circuits will connect transistors and other electronic components on chips of semiconductor materials, usually silicon. The integrated chip is going to hold the transistors. It's your chip, and it's made by a material that can send or not send electricity, send information. And this is usually, again, made of silicon, which is why you hear a silicon valley. Now we have a concept you have to understand called Moore's Law. Gordon Moore, which is a Intel co-founder, came up with this law. Now, this is not a law of nature. This is not... Um, a law that cannot be violated, it's held true to date, they're expecting this to become untrue eventually. But as of right now, it's been standing. And it states that the number of transistors incorporated in a chip will approximately double every 24 months. So what? Who cares about transistors? Transistors are the, the heart, the unit of what a computer is. Okay, we talked about a integrated circuit, we talked about a CPU. It's the transistors that are actually responsible for sending or not sending information. This, if we're, if we're going from the analogy of a human brain, the human brain is made up of neurons, individual neurons. These are nerve cells. These are the things that actually send or don't send information. In the computer world, transistors are that neuron. They either send or they don't send information. So it stands to reason that the more transistors you can cram in on a chip, the more processing power you're going to be able to get out of that computer. So if you were to take a look at a computer from five years ago or 10 years ago compared to today's computer, you're going to find we can cram a whole lot more into a smaller and smaller space than we could, again, five to 10 years ago. If you take a look at your smartphone, if you have an iPhone or a Droid, just take it out and behold the marvel that is your smartphone. I mean, just, again, I'm being kind of goofy here, but appreciate the fact that your smartphone has more processing power in it than the computers that it took to send a man to the moon. That's kind of amazing, okay? Your smartphone has more processing power than the supercomputers that NASA used to send a person to the moon. And no, I don't want any comments in the comments section about we didn't go to the moon or anything like that. That's for a different channel. You can post there, okay? Moving on to the next item that deals with processing, and that would be your motherboard. The reason why we call it the motherboard is because it's mother to all. Every device that deals with the computer, every device on the computer or connected to, connected to the computer goes through the motherboard. The motherboard connects all devices together. It is the backbone of the computer. The motherboard is what we call a PCB or a printed circuit board. If you take a look at this image, you can see that there's a lot of interesting designs on the board. These are not artistic designs. This is not some graphic person creating this cool little image on a motherboard to just make it look cool or hang it on a wall. These are actual wires. There's highways and highways of wires lying on top of each other, next to each other on different layers. These wires are called traces and they allow parts of the computer to communicate all throughout the motherboard. So those wires is not really again, artistic, if you were to take a global shot, for example, if you go to Google Maps and pull out over a massive city, let's say you pull out over Houston, or you pull out over Dallas or New York City, you're going to see all these different lines, right? The highways, the roads. That's what you're looking at here. You're looking at a road map that the computer uses to get information around to part to part. Okay, that's enough about processing. The next video we're going to talk about storage.